you feel like uh, she instigates it or he does? heightened state, state of mind from, from doing things that I don't want them to do, then how do I expect to be able to communicate when they're doing something a lot bigger, like aggression or reactivity on the walk or whatever it may be? So the first thing I want to do, and this is going to apply with both of them here, is I'm going to communicate that I don't want them having any like nonsense in the house right now, any of the rough playing stuff. And I'm going to use the pet corrector for this, right? So the pet corrector is just compressed air. So when you spray it, it gives a loud burst of air here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to condition a verbal marker with the pet corrector here. So this word is going to be no, right? So I'm no. just going to tell yeah. them no. I don't want you to do that right now. So the next time they start playing with each other, I'm just going to say no clearly. I'm not shouting and I'm not angry or anything. And then I'm going to walk up and I'm just going to spray whichever dog initiates that play. No. And then we're going to wait and we're going to see what happens. And if they do it again, I'm going to do that same exact thing again. Now, she seemed a little bit more phased by it than he was. Certain dogs are more or less responsive to this than others. He thinks it's a toy, right? <laughs> so um, we're going to kind of see what we get here with it. So. No. So now that I said no, I'm just going to find him. Now the cool thing about our no marker here is it buys us what's referred to as latency. So what latency is, is after we give that no, we bought ourselves essentially a length of time in order to connect the consequence to the behavior. Okay. So think of no like taking a picture of whatever they're doing in that moment in time, right? So say I said no right now, I would be taking a picture of him on that furniture there, mm -hmm. right? Yes. From there, even if he gets off of it, I've already taken the snapshot. So if I correct, when he's right here, as long as I said no when he's on there, he's still gonna be able to make that connection in his head of what that consequence is for, right? So uh, that's a common misconception a lot of people have of, you know, oh, I need to correct the dog immediately in the act of the behavior. It's not necessarily true, you just have to identify what it is that they're doing that we don't want immediately, right? As long as you do that, that correction can come 10 seconds later, 15 seconds later, you know, with enough time in order for you to, you know, say this is laying down over there, go and get it and then give the correction or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, right? You notice they're actually chilling out here. Right yeah, they're tired already. Yeah, probably not, right? They're just realizing something's a little bit different here. Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out what's going on. Very good. Okay, let's go ahead and get up and we're just going to kind of walk around uh, through the kitchen. only criteria right now is them playing with each other. Mm -hmm. We're being very selective of things. So that's the big thing with stopping unwanted behaviors. If there's something that we don't want the dogs to do, we have to be as clear as possible about what it is. So because of that, you know, I, I'm sure there's a whole list of things that he does and she does where you're like, yeah, I wish that she didn't do that. But if we start going like, don't jump on the couch, don't jump on the person, don't play with each other, don't pick up this off of the ground, don't do this, don't do that, right? It starts getting confusing where it's like, whoa, you know, what can I do, mm -hmm. right? So I like to pick and choose those things that I'm gonna be correcting for initially, and I make essentially like a laundry list of like, okay, cool, top priority, they gotta learn to just like chill out in the house with each okay. other, so we're gonna stop that first, right? Mm -hmm. Once we have that good, then great, I don't want them on the furniture, we're gonna stop that next, mm -hmm. right? And then after that, you know, I don't know, barking, whatever it may be, we're gonna keep going down that list and be as consistent as possible at each of those things until we chip away with them. And a lot of times, you know, just behavioral issues in general really stem from the dog not truly like understanding that we can influence their behavior. You know what I mean? So 
if she doesn't realize that you have the ability to communicate with her, you know, things that she doesn't want to do, or things that you don't want her to do, or him, or, or whatever it may be, they're more likely to react and act, you know, a certain way in the house and stuff like that. So we want to be really aware of those things.